Okay, we're going to log off. And let's log in as, oh, let's see. We'll log in as Austin Powers first. And he's got permission I, on the top secret folder. Cumulative permission. Let's see what permission he has. So he'll log on locally. Now that he's got log on locally privilege. And let's go ahead and launch Explorer real quick. We'll go over here. And let's go to our C drive. And let's go on top secret. And we have permission. Yuck, yuck, sick. And we can see our germ warfare documents and super secret death rays. There's Gort's death ray. Gort, the indestructible robot from the day the Earth stood still. The Manchurian candidate, Oswald, kills Kennedy. I think he was a Manchurian candidate. We'd never know. There's Paris Hilton. She's programmed probably to assassinate the next, who knows, maybe like the next, some member of Congress or something. Do you think Paris Hilton's evil? I don't think she's evil. I just think she's a programmed, mind-controlled Manchurian candidate for t taking care of somebody famous. Uh, maybe not. Okay. So we can, anyway, we can tell that Austin Powers has full access on Top Secret. Now, Secret Plans, again, he's got access through that domain user's account. So let's log out. And let's do... Let's do Dr. Evil now. Remember, Dr. Evil should have cumulative permission. He's a member of Domain Users, and he stole Top Secret. So he should have full permission on that folder, but he was also added to also added to the group, the Top Secret Deny group. And they, that group has been dis explicitly denied permission for that resource or for that folder. So Dr. Evil's logging in. He's trying to break into our network and do some horrible things. And unfortunately, Austin Powers is unaware. Now notice, you curr don't currently have permission to access this folder. And same thing. Now if we had different credentials, okay, but he's been explicitly denied permission on top secret. Now let's see if it works on secret plans. And again, it also works on secret plans. So Dr. Evil's denied permission, Austin Powers gains permission. Okay, so we've contrasted permissions between Dr. Evil and Austin Powers. Um, Austin Powers and Dr. Evil both had membership in the top secret domain local group. Their global groups were a part of that. Um, however, we had placed Dr. Evil in another group called Top Secret Deny. And that effectively, you know, with an explicit denial of permission, prevented him from being able to go into that folder and see its contents or view its contents or, or modify them in any way. And again, let's take a look at that. Let's go to Top Secret and we'll look at the DACL. So here we have Top Secret Access and Top Secret Deny. Now Austin Powers is a member of Top Secret Access. He's not a member of Top Secret Deny. Um, he's a member, Austin Powers is a member of Domain Users. And if you look, Domain Users has read but not write privileges. Remember that Austin Powers had full privileges. That's because as long as it's not explicit, in other words, as long as I'm simply not checking allow but I am not checking anything in the Deny column, then he gets the combination of all the groups he's a member of, and it's going to be the most permissive combination of those permissions. Um, now, 
Dr. Evil, on the other hand, sure, he's a member of multiple groups. He's a member of users, the users group, so he should have had read permission. And he's a member of Top Secret Access, so he should have had full permission here because he stole that, you know, secretly, covertly. But he was also a member of Top Secret Deny, and we had explicitly denied permission um, to you know, all of our enemy agents and, you know, to Dr. Evil in this case. So even though he did have cumulative permissions to go into that folder and even modify and change and delete things, because he was a member of this group that had explicit denial on the DACL, he could not read that folder or go into it in any, any way or fashion. Um, let's take one more look at that. We'll, we'll create a read-only domain local group for our research group, our research global group, so our scientists. So open up Active Directory Users and Computers, and we're going to go into Northern Hemisphere, and I'm going to say a new, and I want to make a domain local group. It'll be a security group, and we'll call this Top Secret Read Only. And the purpose of this will be, if we add anybody to this, we want to use explicit denial, and we're just going to make sure that they only have read-only privileges. Um, so let's go ahead, and we're going to add another member here. Now again, Microsoft cautions against using explicit denial too much because it will interfere with the flow of your inheritance hierarchy. Only use it when you have to or need to. But let's say that we're just you know, darn sure we only want our scientists to have read-only access and no ability to modify these documents. What I would do is I'd add the Global Security Group Research and make that a member of my domain local group. So remember, again, remember we're following AGUDLP. We add the users to the global group, which is research. And if I go down here in my research OU, here's my research global group, and my members are Carl Sagan, Einstein, Tesla. Ooh, what's he doing there? He is does not belong there. And yeah, let's get rid of Dr. Evil. Boy, Dr. Evil is just wreaking havoc. He's all over the place. He should only be a member of enemy agents. There we go. Okay, yeah, so, so we've got to be really careful. Got to be really, really careful with all these evil agents running around, how we assign our permissions. They're just sneaking around. They're crafty and sneaky. Anyway, back to our domain local group. So all of our research scientists are added to the research group, and then that's the A and the G. Um, we're bypassing the universal group because we don't have a multiple domain structure yet. And now we're going to domain local group. Our domain local group is top secret read only. And we've added the global security group research to that. So this is what we'll actually add to the DACL of top secret to control it or to modify the, the effective permissions. And so I'm going to go to top secret. I'm going to go to properties. I'm going to go to the security tab. And I'm going to go to edit. And I'm going to add my new group. And top secret read only. And in this case, let's look at the difference between implicit versus explicit uh, denial. So we will simply implicitly deny. In other words, we'll just uncheck allow, but we're not going to explicitly deny. We're not, we're not going to check any of these deny boxes here. And what will happen is, look, um, we'll use Tesla. He's one of our research scientists. He's a member of multiple groups. The main users is allowed read access. So even if you were a member of only these two groups, he would be allowed read access if he logged out and logged in just because he has cumulative permission of both those groups. Not read-only, I'm sorry, but I meant top secret access. So domain users, but he's also a member of top secret access, and top secret access has full control. Modify all the permission. So he's going to get the most permissive set that accumulates from his multiple group membership. So in this case, even though I'm implicitly denying it here, and he's a member of this group, because he's a member of this group, he's going to have full permission. Only if we went in and explicitly denied top secret read-only um, write and modify privileges would he be restricted to you know to write. So let's test that out real quick. We'll just implicitly deny him. We've added it to the DACL. And we're going to log out. 